What up guys, Annie Tier Guildford. We're going to be reviewing Inuyasha episodes 68 and 69. 68, not gonna lie, it was a cute little episode between the character Shippo and this new character no known as uh, Soten. Soten? Soiten? So Soten? Something like that. Turns out she's a girl, which I'm not gonna lie to you, I was pretty shocked. I, I don't know, for some, I don't know why. Thinking about it clearly and looking at her, she does. Well, no, that's not right either. I feel like Soten is like one of those characters where they can either be a girl or a boy. Because one, there does seem to show characteristic that would say resemble girl features. But she dresses exactly like her older brother of one of the Thunder Butter brothers. Forgot, forgot his name. But she dresses just like him. And that's, I guess, what kind of trip, trips me up. She dresses and looks exactly like him. They look exactly the same. They could be twins. But no. She was a girl. Which threw me for a loop or whatever. Even though I bet, like, if Inuyasha goes through a time skip where they have, like, all the characters older. Shippo is, like, much older. Like, maybe, like, 15 or so. And... Pretty sure if that if that if something like that were to happen, Shippo and Soten will definitely be a thing. I'm not sh I'm not calling sh I'm not saying I'd ship them right now because for one, they're children. No, not no, they're kids. So no, give it time when they're older. Then yes, but yeah, when Shippo gets older, I can definitely see that being a hardcore ship. But <laughs> especially how that episode ended. But that episode, once again, it was cute, but it, was, it but it was a bit childish, but it's whatever, whatever. I'm not complaining about the episode, don't get me wrong, I, I'm not complaining. I very much so enjoyed that episode. And Inuyasha and Kag well, not so much Kagome, more so Inuyasha, he was bullying that baby dragon, like, come on, bro, it's just a baby dragon. Yeah, I get that he was kind of uh, being a hassle and whatnot, but... Honestly, that dragon is no threat to anyone. He can't even hurt anyone with the level of his arrows. The most they do is like... From what Kagome tells me, the most they do is like kind of... Contact with you? I don't know. That kind of looked like a powerful arrow, to be honest with you. But I guess not. I guess when that baby dragon gets older and starts shooting out its own massive arrows, then I'm sure at that point it's going to be... Strong as heck. But yeah, so far the, the, these episodes were pretty nice. I feel like the way last up the last episode, episode sixty nine ended, it kind of felt like it was. I was only like starting the basis of it. It's definitely getting a part two. I'm not sure if it's gonna get any more parts, but it looks like maybe I started something pretty big, with this uh faceless demon calling itself M Muso Muso something like that. Kind of reminds me of the Muso, Muso soup or whatever, if you know what I'm talking about. But, but yeah. And he's kind of, this is what I'm theorizing. I'm, is this like, well, you can't really call it human because obviously he shows more traits of demon, but. Excuse me. What I was getting the vibe of is maybe this Muso guy was like the remaining the remainings of uh, Naraku slash Onigumo's like you know humanity and how he acts, cause in a way this demon acts very human, but it's chaotic. Like it shows obviously we know it's a demon, but personality wise it gives off tra human tra very strong human traits that are chaotic for the most part. Oh yeah. Highlighted moment in this in, in in the whole thing for episode 69. Naraku came outside not wearing a stupid monkey suit, exposing himself to the world along with his incarnation. He you guys don't get it. He was finally growing a pair and was ballsy enough to go out in the middle, go out in broad, not broad daylight, but pretty much be outside and reveal himself to the world 
without a disguise. I'm not sure whether he just knew that he no one was going to come after him during that time of the night. Or maybe for once in his life he's starting to show that he's got some nerve. Because what he did in episode 69 was the most un-Naraku thing I've ever seen Naraku do. Because, like, if someone told me, like, I'm pretty sure, like, hey, look. And this episode, Naraku is, like, outside and, like, you know, bringing a demon. Wait, he's outside? Wait, it's it's a doll, right? No, it's him. He's wearing a monkey suit. That I mean, that that's the only reason why he would be outside, and because no one would. Well, no, his monkey suit is kind of like his trademark at this point. But you get, the, but you get it. And uh, no, no, he's outside, revealing his face to the world. I would have been like, get the heck out of here, Naraku. He's too much of a coward to do anything like that. He, the only way he'd ever reveal him, himself is at the comfort of his own home. Otherwise, that guy is going to be wearing a monkey suit almost every time he goes outside. He's like, uh, the light, the light, I need my monkey suit. Naraku going out, I don't know. That was the mo- again, that was the most un-Naraku thing I've seen him do. Because he's always such a spineless, quivering, no nerves pulling, like coward so once again this was a massive shock to me but what i don't understand is that why did he bring about this demon this demon like it looks i mean it's giving inuyasha the work but that's only because i you know inuyasha needs to stop playing around and just use the wind scar already i feel like anyone that naraku manifests through his flesh will require a wind scar technique and if the wind scar doesn't work, backlash wave. Simple as that. But no, he just swings around, playing around with his enemies. I'm here thinking in the back of my mind, like, buddy. <laughs> Almost all of the enemies or incarnations of Naraku you have faced, which is really just one that you really fight, which is Kagura. They always require a wind scar. Regular attack thrusts. And swing techniques will not do anything to them. If you use a wind scar, however, then yeah, you got the win. You're good. But no, he'd rather play around with them first until he's like, okay, they're too strong for me. Wind scar, bro. You sh- at this point, I will consider every incarnation of Naraku t- like mandatory wind scar, just so it's not a pain in the butt to deal with. Saves you reserves, and you don't gotta. You don't gotta... That's, that's like your main way to kill them. In my opinion, this Muso now... I'm not sure if this Muso guy is like... At Kaguya or Kana level. He just looks like a walking... Cha- chaotic flesh. Demon thing. So, yeah. And yet he acts very human. And I mean like very human. For a demon he acts. he He's like human corruption. At it's finest point. Like this. This Muso guy is like at the heart. Of human corruption. That's how he is. He's like. He's a selfish prick. Killing people. Just so he can feel something. To give some worth. To. A, a distraction, a joy, a hobby. That's like his hobby. Because that's what keeps him from not being bored or really thinking too much on his existence. Or trying to jog his own memory. But yeah. Honestly, this guy... um, uh, He is probably one of the worst incarnations. I... I I know I'm saying that now, even though it's still super early. We only seen one episode where he's in, but based on what I'm seeing so far, yeah, I'm not, I'm not crazy about this character. He's not, I don't want to say the word trash, but he's not good. But as a villain, we'll see, because it's only been one episode. But I mean, Inuyasha, he's giving K- Sango. Kagome, Miroku, Shippo, Inuyasha. He's giving them all the work. So, 
But then again, Inuyasha is holding back. All he's doing is swinging around his sword like an idiot. He hasn't done a wind scar or backlash wave. Or any of his main go-to techniques. No blades of blood, no iron reverse soul stealer, like nothing. So it's like, buddy, are you going to do something anytime soon? Because, bro, you ain't... <laughs> I'm just saying, if swings like if I if it's if it's been past more than five minutes and I'm still fighting this guy, oh screw it, man. Obviously this ain't working. Let's just win scar him and be done with it. I mean, one could say that maybe Naraku's insects would just get in the way, or his demon puppets would just get in the way, preventing his incarnation to be killed off so easily, but I don't know. I still would have used the wind scar because that thing is kicking her ass in the Yasha, just saying. But anyway, guys, let's just get into questions. Question one. What were your thoughts over the character so uh, Soten overall? Did you like her? Did you not like her? What did you feel like? And uh, question two. Trying to think of a good question too. My mind's blanking out. Hmm. Out of all the characters in the series of Inuyasha, whether they're villain or or heroine or like hero, out of all the characters, if you can bring one character to the few to the modern day of Japan in Kagome's world. Which one would you? Which one would it be to see how they would react in the current time of society? And let me know why in the comment section below. All right, then, guys, that's it for me. Don't forget to like, comment, sub if you haven't already. Really motivates me to put more content out there for you guys as my guildmates, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.